All right, so what we're looking at here, vlog video today, by the way, the audio quality is gonna suffer a little bit. This is, this is Nick's uh, VR rig because he likes to do sim racing and stuff and he has a dedicated system that sits where his uh, gaming chair and steering wheel and stuff is. It needed a fluid swap in the radiator because this is an actual refillable AIO. So Nick has instead decided instead of filling up the fluid, it's better to change the CPU, change the graphics card, change the case, change the cooler, change the, the SSD or add an NVMe to this. So we figured we'll take you guys along for the ride. Also, this was my case that we started the channel with. The Switch 810 that I did mods and stuff with. This guy has uh, been around a while. Crucial's new external SSDs are a must have for any tech or PC enthusiast. The Crucial X6 offers read speeds of up to 800 megabytes per second and available in sizes from 500 gigabytes to four terabytes of storage space, while the X8 offers extreme speeds over one gigabyte per second and up to two terabytes capacity. External SSDs are a great way to back up important files and documents, store game libraries, and make moving items between PCs quick and easy. To learn more about the X6 and X8 portable SSDs from Crucial, follow the link in the description below. I think one of the proudest mods I ever did to this case is when I cut this to make better airflow. We have better airflow now. So anyway, this case holds no sentimental value. I mean, it was the most expensive case I had ever purchased at the time I bought it. It was $169 and I bought it at Fry's Electronics in Tustin, California. First thing we need to do though, is we need to do some sort of a benchmark. Nick, do you have 3D Mark? No, I'm no, probably not with it. Do you own 3D Mark? I don't think so, on Steam, no. You want to just bring your account over? No. <laughs> so before we run our, we're just gonna run Time Spy Extreme, see what the CPU score and GPU score is. Let's talk about the specs that are currently in here. Uh, is this 32 gigs or 16 gigs? 24. No, it can't be 24, there's four sticks. It doesn't divide by evenly by four. Well, I guess this just turned into a, why does Nick only have 24 gigs of RAM video? So before we benchmark, okay. X99 G1 gaming motherboard from Gigabyte. I'm inclined to think it's maybe the board, if you want to know the truth, because it's Gigabyte. Uh, anyway, 32 gigs of RAM, <laughs> a 5820K CPU. So this is an old six core 12 thread CPU and uh, RT, uh, RTX, GTX 1080 from Oris, it's an Oris Extreme. I guess now we need to figure out if the board has got a problem because of the fact that we were planning on reusing this board today. Because what we were gonna do is, is Nick's upgrade plan was like, how can I get a better VR experience and what upgrade path makes the most sense without spending a ridiculous amount of money? Now, GPU was obviously on the list. Fortunately, I have lots of GPUs here. Uh, and we made him a really good deal on a graphics card, an RTX 2080, which is a huge upgrade, upgrade over a 1080. But he was like shopping for motherboards and CPUs and he was like, I don't know what motherboard and CPU to get. And I was like, you know, you don't need a huge upgrade with your CPU, hardly at all. I mean, sure the IPC improvement would, would matter if you're going with like regular gaming on a, on a, a 5820K. I said, so let's leave an X99 board in here. Let's go with a 6900X. He's got eight core 16 thread, which is two cores, four threads more than he currently has. And an RTX 2080 would be a great, great upgrade for VR. I'm gonna do like Phil suggested, and I'm just gonna switch these all to the black channels. Um, Cause there's two sticks per channel. I mean, one may not have just been seated all the way too. There's a lot of reasons why that can be. But it's obvious something ain't right. So by switching the RAM now, now we're in a boot loop. Interesting. Now I'm gonna start with one. Yeah, so we have eight gigabytes of RAM showing. That's good. So let's now check pins. So I'm just gonna occupy one channel at a time and see if we get it to boot. What I'm also looking for is to see if I suddenly get it to boot with another RAM stick put in there and then it doesn't give us an additional uh, value of RAM. 16 gigs, 24 gigs. Okay, so what that means now, one of three things. This RAM stick's bad, that left orange slot is bad, or one of them wasn't seated all the way. Survey says 32. 32. 
So you just need wow. to push your hand harder. <laughs> just have to shove it in harder. Now we, can, now we can continue with the build. Yeah, pro tip. Remember, the, the very first thing I always said to try is reseat stuff on that video. Okay, fixed. Are you gonna do benchmark still here? Oh yeah. All right, so. It even displays the score slowly. Amanda, okay? <laughs> Waiting. <laughs> Still waiting. This isn't an issue of slow hardware as much as it's just bad OS, like, clutter. Oh my god. 3,300, great! <laughs> no, it's not. We are gonna improve that today. <laughs> Granted, we're not going with necessarily the most high-end hardware. We are definitely going with better hardware. So, Nick, it is time for you to, do the thing. to take the stuff out. Okay. Well, there's three spinning drives here. Where's your SSD? Up in here. It's in the oh, front. Up in here! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Only both went there. <laughs> Nick saw it and he goes, that's Asimov. Asimov. I want that. Can I get it to him? You would! <laughs> I put it in a... So you're gonna put these in a NAS or something? Probably. What did you get? You know what I got? Oh! Oh no! It's fine. Ew. Ew. Dude, your hands are like... Ew. They're not... Ew. <laughs> oh. Why is it like I'm working on a car? <laughs> Ah, I, have a, I have an open cuticle. Okay, yeah. fix it. <laughs> Close your Close cuticle, man. <laughs> Don't drop it on the pins. Oh my god. So much pressure. So much pressure that he said. Pull, pull the latch all the way back first. There you go. Hold down. <laughs> I did it. See? Easy. Wait, the air goes in. <laughs> did you actually just Jake. put it upside down? Jeez. I'm testing the grasshopper. You want all them pins to make contact. Everyone gets a little piece of love in there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do that with a straight thing. It's, it's like, oh, I know what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> you need it, though. <laughs> no, no. Not yet. Give me five more minutes. Of your system. <laughs> Jay has that power, so it doesn't even feel like it. Yeah. Big consumer race faster! Big processor! Oh, the processor. Oh, like the GPU scores, they be dropping. <laughs> Pull hard enough, it'll detach on that. No. Hold up. Here we go. Let me RTFM real quick. Look. I mean, look, this is, this is not your ace attack. Design. That's a. It's just beefy. That's the thing with Alpha Cool. It's like they're not necessarily the most stylish looking stuff, but they've got that German engineering. Installed. Sick. Mr. Spot. It'll squish. Mr. Spot. It'll squirt! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna put the EVGA card in there, but it just, EVGA has been struggling a little bit with their designs in the last couple generations. Not a, not a fan of them. And with how good this build's turning out, which was supposed to be like a, kind of a piece together. Yeah. <laughs> it's starting to look better than your main rig. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> whoa. Okay, push the power button. Did you wire it up right? Oh my god. Yes! Dude, so I much did air. It. So much airflow. Feel the top. <laughs> oh, this is nice. Let's see if he has 32 gigs of RAM still. <laughs> yeah, Schrodinger's RAM. It exists and it simultaneously doesn't exist. <laughs> it's super ramp position RAM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been observed. <laughs> hey! Okay, we observed it. 32 gigs. <laughs> All right, so it's the same OS. 
just, like I said, CPU upgrade and stuff. So we need to now get, oh wait, do I need to, yeah, because the CPU changed, I need to probably re-enable XMP. Nope, it's still on, okay. 6900K K or X, whatever, 6900X I believe they called it. Um, Nick updated his BIOS last night. That's an important thing to point out because this board predated that particular CPU. I told him, update your BIOS before you bring the computer in. And he did, he did the latest BIOS, as you can see it boots. So same OS install, not a clean install. I, I told Nick, even though he's got this M.2, which he's gonna, the, the Crucial P5, which he's going to be reinstalling Windows, a fresh install and everything on. I said, we need to run our tests on the same drive. That way with the same amount of like, OS degradation over time with fragmented files and startup items, nothing has changed. So now we're gonna go ahead and run our test again and see, oh, your Steam and everything was on one of those drives we just took out. Was it? Yes, um, you must reinstall Steam. Okay. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, it's like it gets harder to pull. Yeah. Look at that. that was now good. all kinds of static electricity. We had, a 3,372 was our combined. And we just got 4,908. Wow. So our graphics score increased from a 3,567 to a 5,220. And the CPU went from a 2,578 to a 3,669. That's a huge chunk. We had uh, the estimated Battlefield 5 1440 p performance on the previous version build was 75 FPS. This one's 105. So this video, yeah, guys, obviously we're aware of the GPU situation. Fortunately, I'm able to help my team out when it comes to trying to upgrade something. This was a good learning experience for Nick because he was looking at an inefficient upgrade path. He was gonna keep his 1080, but he figured his VR experience would be better by going with a, uh, with a new CPU and a new motherboard. And he was shopping for that and was asking me what my recommendation was on that. Phil and I were talking about going 10th gen, or maybe him going 9th gen, because we have a 9900K, et cetera, here. But then he wouldn't need a new motherboard, he would need the CPU, and that wouldn't have fixed the graphics problem. And the thing that's really holding back his VR experience was the 1080 reaching its limitations with newer titles and something as, as fast as racing and how you need extreme latency-free VR experience to, to be good at driving in VR. And so, I told him I said it makes more sense to get the best graphics card we can get in there and then the best CPU we can go with your current motherboard setup. So this was a much more logical upgrade. And then the case, we had promised to switch out that case for him, what, three years ago? <laughs> yeah, something years like ago. that, yeah. Back when we did the Cougar case, when we had the other studio. Um, so anyway, we used the Meshify, C, uh, Meshify 2 here, uh, which, dude, the amount of airflow in this thing is awesome. It is one of the best airflow cases you can possibly get from Midtower. He wanted to go with a smaller case than what he currently had. So as you guys can see, some pieces of Skunk Works in here. I've got six of my fans that came out of Skunk Works, the ML uh, Maglev Corsair fans, the static white LED ones. That's gonna give him plenty of case light, which with all these lights blasting, you, you can't really tell. The Strix 2080 card, and then the uh, Alpha Cool, the Ice Cool, whatever they call it. Ice the, Bear. The Ice Bear AIO. This thing is beefy. AF and it's got all kinds of RGB on the block. We switched the lights on the on the radiator. But what I like about these particular types of AIOs, much bigger pump, much more robust pump than what you'll find in a typical AIO with an Ace Tech design. Um, refillable, as we showed you guys. This QDC right here, a quick disconnect, would allow him if he wanted to put a block on that card if he ever decided to, get the Alpha Cool block for it, um, and then add it into the loop through matching QDCs and the same size and you know, black tubing and then it would be a full loop. Because the radiator is the exact same radiator they use as a copper rad for a standalone 360 that you would get for a custom loop. It's not an aluminum radiator like you find with the Asatex and, and the other basic AIOs. It's a full basic custom loop that's pre-assembled. Much better cold plate on the CPU, uh, cooling uh, or the block itself. It fits Threadripper, it fits X299, it fits Intel mainstream, Ryzen, all that sort of stuff. And then we already talked about the M.2. That's gonna be a huge upgrade for him when it comes to SSD speeds. And then, what else we put in here? Nothing else really, right? Case, graphics card, CPU, and your storage. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Uh, I know the audio on this is probably a little more echoey than you're used to, but you know, we're just kind of doing it on the fly. So there you go, there's a logical upgrade path that 
looks a lot better than other case did too. And it doesn't <laughs> stick to you when you touch it. That's a good one. It's more caught up with the times. Yeah. More. <laughs> You're still a generation old on the GPU and like four generations old, five generations old on the CPU. I mean, I'll be happy. Time to upgrade that CPU, bro. Oh, and we fixed <laughs> eight gigabytes of his RAM. Oh yeah, we fixed his RAM channel setup. I, I still think one was just loose, so. All right, there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. And of course, we'll see you in the next one. Blades.